In this video, we balance a matrix. If we know what the impedance is and we know what the trip origins and trip destinations are, how can we figure out how many trips are likely to go to one zone or another? How many trips are going to go to New Fargo and how many are going to go to Dakotopolis? This depends on trip purpose. Now, there are many trip purposes. From the point of view of modeling, we can simplify that too. How many trip purposes have their own impedance function? Work trips are sufficiently important to have their own function, so are shop, school, and other activities. Some types of trips are what we call matching trips. So for every job, there's a worker. For every worker, there is a job. We're ignoring unemployment. We're ignoring second jobs. We need to ensure that the total number of origins and the total number of destinations match, which is why we did the normalization procedure after trip generation. We need to make sure that when we apply the model, that we are constrained so that for every work trip that's leaving the zone, it finds a job at a destination. And for every job at a destination, it is satisfied by a worker. So we have to use a particular procedure called a doubly constrained model. But there are other types of destinations which are not constrained. For instance, shopping. I generate a certain number of shopping trips. I can go to a store. But my going to a store doesn't generally keep anybody else from going to that store. For shopping trips, we don't have to use a doubly constrained model. We can use a singly constrained model. We can just use those probabilities, in quotes, the impedances, and multiply them by the number of trip origins and destinations and normalize it once, and that will tell us how many trips are going to each particular location. We don't have to worry about balancing to make sure the number of destinations in the zone matches the attractiveness of the zone. We just need to know where those destinations are. The solution technique is described in the equations on this slide. The number of trips from an origin to destination depends on the trip origins, trip destinations, and the cost of travel between them. Two balancing coefficients, k sub i and k sub j, need to be estimated. I'm going to show you the doubly constrained model, which applies to work trips. There's an algorithm here, and what we're doing is called balancing the matrix. We're ensuring that the total number of trips that are leaving the zone are all satisfied as destinations. All the number of trips going to every zone match the number of origins, and these totals are internally consistent. We have to have our origin number of trips, which are normalized, normalized so that the number of trip origins is satisfied and equals the number of trip destinations and we have to have the cost between the zones. We need to have an impedance function. We need to know what is people's willingness to travel between the zones, and I give you two examples here. The problem will tell you what the impedance function is. Just keep in mind that it can be any functional form, and these are just some examples. What we're doing is we're taking the impedance function and we're multiplying it by the number of origins in zone i and the number of destinations in zone j, and we sum the row totals, and that's gonna give us this really, really, really big number because if there's 1,000 origins and 1,000 destinations and there's an impedance, we're multiplying 1,000 by 1,000 by the impedance and we get a big number. That's the first step here in the process of balancing the matrix. We sum up those numbers and we notice that the numbers are greater than the total number of our origin trips. So we adjust them, normalize them essentially, just as we did before, so that the totals now match the origins. And then we go back and essentially, and the term is called raking, we rake the matrix to adjust the numbers to make sure that it matches. And then we do the same thing that we did row-wise. We do it column-wise to make sure that the number of destinations matches the columns. And we iterate this procedure until it converges to some close enough threshold so that each time we are doing it, we are getting very small changes between the origin and destination. I'm going to go through an example. So the question is, continuing the problem that we did for trip generation, determine the number of person trips going between each origin destination pair in Decodopolis, in New Fargo and solve your matrix within 1% of the balanced matrix. Recall from our impedance discussion, we said the log sum from mode choice can be used as the impedance function in destination choice. If you have viewed the mode choice video, this will look familiar. The probability of choosing a mode depends on the utility of that mode and the utility of all other modes. The denominator of the first line is basically the log sum. It is the log of the sum of the utilities of all the modes serving an OD pair and thus can serve as impedance. So what do we have? We have origin zones, so origin zone 1 and origin zone 2. We have destination zones, destination zone 1 and destination zone 2. We have the total number of trips in origin zone 1 and origin zone 2, so 15,000 trips originated in zone 1, 22,500 trips originated in zone 2. We have the normalized number of destinations in zone 1, 16,326. 
and the normalized number of destinations in zone 2, 21,173. And we have the impedance, which we solved for in a previous video, 0 0.013, for instance. So the algorithm says, multiply the number of origins in zone 1 by the number of destinations in zone 1 by the impedance for zone pair 1, 1. Similarly, multiply the number of origins in zone 1 by the number of destinations in zone 2 by the impedance between zones 1 and 2. Similarly, for origin zone 2. For zone pair 1, 1, we have 3.3 million as our number. 300,000 for zone pair 1, 2. We sum up those numbers and that gives us the number 3.6 million with some rounding. And we compare 15,000 over 3,581,780. And that gives us our adjustment factor, 0 0.004188, which we can then multiply by the values in cell 1, 1 and cell 1, 2. And we place these numbers with the adjusted numbers, which will add up to 15,000. Similarly, in the second row for origin zone 2, we have 347,000 trips. We have almost 27 million for cell 2, 2, adding up to 27.3 million. Looking at the ratio of 22,500 to 27,263,455 gives us 0 0.000825. We multiply values in cell 2, 1 and cell 2, 2 by 0 0.000825 and our total will be 22,500. Great. Is the problem solved? If this were a singly constrained matrix, the problem would be solved. This is a doubly constrained matrix, and now we need to compare the column sums with what we started with. Well, the total is going to match, but the total in column 1, 14,029, does not match our original number of destinations, 16,326. And the total in column 2, 23,471, is not going to match 21,173. But they're in the neighborhood. We're not too far off. We're off by 16% and minus 10%. One of them is too high and one of them is too low. For a singly constrained matrix, this would not be a problem. But for a doubly constrained matrix, we're not satisfying the number of trip destinations. So what do we do? We repeat the normalization procedure. We adjust these two numbers so that they add up to 16,326 within rounding error. And these two numbers, they add up to 21,173. And then we add row-wise. And then row-wise, we were off by a little bit, but we are not as off by as much as we were before. So we adjust these numbers row-wise and column-wise, and we're much closer. If we set a 5% tolerance, and that's just so we don't have to keep doing this example, because if we set a 0.0001% tolerance, we'd just be doing this for a very long time. It converges. We're close enough. So we're off by less than 5% here, and then we say that's within the accuracy of the model. And as long as we do this consistently, we're okay. If we were using computers, we could easily set a tighter tolerance like the 1% that we proposed. You can write down the steps to the algorithm, and that's fine. But the key is to understand the logic of the algorithm. And then you don't need to memorize it. What you need to do in order to be able to make sure that the sum of the four cells equals the total number of trips, that the row totals equal the control total you started with, trip origins, and the column equals the total control totals for the columns that you started with, trips generated at destinations. It's just a little bit of linear algebra.